Well, hello folks, and welcome to another episode of Financial QB TV, and I am your host, Richard Reyes, Orlando's only financial quarterback and investor coach, and this is the only place on the net where we care enough to tell you the truth. Now, one of the basic concepts that I see most investors struggle with is the idea of trying to understand where returns come from. They don't quite understand it. Now, traditional financial planners and the financial industry itself would lead you to believe that returns come from some financial guru or talented manager who knows what stocks to pick and when to be in and out of the market. So in essence, they tell you that returns come from a manager. Well, the reality is that returns come from the market. It's not the managers, but the market itself, which drives the long-term returns of the market. And like always, I hear the next critical question, which says, well, how does the market do that? Well, let me give you a simple formula which actually drives the returns of the market. The simple formula reads something like this. The cost, and it's called the cost of capital formula. And it says that the cost of capital equals the return of capital. And what this means is simple, is that when companies want to grow or even start, they need to raise money. So they must raise it from going to you, the investor who provides them that money. And in return, the company rewards the investor who is willing to provide the funds with a return. Now, it's a beautiful thing. In theory, the more, and in theory, the more risk that, that a company has, well, the higher the expected return for the investor. So, that is a very simple underlying formula for where returns in the market come from, but the equation assumes that we live in a rather perfect world. You know, that, and, and in this world we have no cost of investing, uh, and it also it, it entails that we have no investor misbehavior. So, meaning that investors are smart enough to invest their money and allow their money to grow for the long term without any emotions or cost involved. So, I started thinking about this uh, the other day, and I thought of what is called, what I call the new equation. One that would be more practical for the investor to use, so as to better understand the impact of cost and behavior to their returns. And I want to call this the new cost of capital formula. Now, this is based on two studies. Number one, it's based on the cost of capital formula, that I stated earlier, but it's also based on the Dalbar study. Uh, now, I've mentioned Dalbar in my other presentations, and what Dalbar is, is an independent uh, firm which studies investor behavior, or rather investor misbehavior when it comes to, obviously, investing. So, let's take a look at the new formula. New formula reads something that, like this. Return of capital, okay, equals the cost of capital minus Investor expenses minus behavior penalty. So if we look at this, we notice this, that over the long term, over the last 20 years, inclusive to the end of last year, the U.S. large companies had a, uh, which is stated by the S&P 500, had a return of about 8.9%. Now, not a bad return, even when we include last year's return into the equation. Now, Unfortunately, though, the average mutual fund expense per year, U.S. market mutual fund expense, is about 3%. And it breaks down like this. It's about 1.35% is the average U.S. equity fund cost, as stated by Morningstar. And in addition, there's, there's additional costs that need to be added to that in, in reference to uh, turnover expense, which the average mutual fund turns over about 85% of its portfolio a year. So when you add those two variables together, you get about 3%. So that has to be actually stripped off those off that return. Now the next figure is, is, is astounding, okay, because it's worse than the 3% expense, and that is the 4.1%. It's investor behavior penalty due to speculating and gambling in the market. What that means is that when markets crash and you panic and you try to sell out of the market and when it goes down, and then you try to buy into the market when the market is up. <clears throat> so it's the constant buy high, sell low type of scenario. And it's a continuous behavior that investors tend to get themselves in. So that, that has a cost of 4.1%. You get the picture? 
So that's 4.1% directly decre decre uh, uh, subtracted from your return. So now, let's do the math. So, if we got 8.9%, which is the average return of the S&P 500 or U.S. large company stocks, minus the 3% expense, minus the 4.1%, we get an, out, an astounding return to the investor of 1.8%. All, all this 1.8%. This is a devastating number for investors. So most investors over the last 20 years have made little or no return at all. And just imagine if we start reducing this number by the effect of taxes. So you're down to hardly really no return whatsoever. So what is the moral of the story? Number one is don't use actively traded funds or financial advisors who use those funds because the fees are exorbitant and the allocations are poor. So that is the cost side that we can work on. And the second is control your behavior. If we just allocate and rebalance your portfolio for the long term, we can reduce that 